In this video, we will cover how to work with default Azure credentials and what is the benefit of using it. So the first question would be why to use default Azure credentials when we have several authentication mechanisms in Azure. So the most basic answer of this question would be because it simplifies the process of authenticating the applications. And how does it do it? As we know, there are a lot of authentication mechanisms when we work on Azure, like manage entity service application share token, and we can use like any one of it. But the problem would be all this authentication mechanism is not just generic and we have to pick and choose based on the platform that we have been working on. So let me give you an example. So as you can see in this particular diagram, when we are doing the local development, then we would be primarily using the application service principle to connect to Azure services, or we would be using something like developer account, which could be Azure CLI, PowerShell or Azure developer CLI. But whenever app is going to deploy it on Azure, then we cannot use the developer account or the authentication mechanism that we have been using over here. We have to use something called managed identity, or if your application is deployed on on Premises, then you can use the service principle. So you can see based on the different platform, we do have a different authentication mechanism. So to resolve all this, we can use the default Azure credentials. This would help us to automatically pick the best authentication method based on our environment. So if you are working on the local environment, then it will look for whether the service principle or share token or authentication via Azure CLI. But if app has been deployed on Azure platform, then it will automatically look for something called manage identity so we do not have to modify code based on our environment let's just see how it works so there are a lot of authentication mechanisms. so we do have something called environment variable manage identity and development tools in the first case if we have set up azure service principle credential in our environment variables then default azure credentials is going to use those to authenticate it the manage identity one it's going to be useful if our application is running on azure services with a manage identity enabled so it will use this identity to authenticate without needing any credential in your code and then the development tools as we have covered in our diagram like if you have signed through azure cli then default azure credential is going to use that to authenticate now the next question would be we do have a lot of authentication mechanism right so how will default azure credential is going to identify okay which particular authentication mechanism it has to use so that's where this kind of hierarchy comes into picture once you put the default azure credential in our code then it's going to try all these credentials options it's going going to try in this particular hierarchy only. So first of all, it's going to start with the environment credentials. Environment credential is going to look for service principles. Then it's going to go for the manage identity credentials. Then it's going to go for share token cache credentials. And even after that, like it's not able to find the required credential to authenticate. Then it's going to go for the Azure CLI credential, PowerShell credential, and the Azure developer CLI credential. So if you want to check which particular credential default Azure credential is using, then we can just log the output using this logging.debug. This is something that we are going to cover in our code. But yeah, this is recommended to do it in the non-prod environment because you would be getting a lot of information over there once you enable this option. Now the next part, what are the benefits that we are going to get using default Azure credentials? So first thing would be the simplicity. We do not have to write authentication specific code, can write less code and we do not have to worry about different authentication methods. Security is going to be second point because it reduces the risk of accidentally leaking credentials says it can use the managed identity also once your application has been deployed on Azure. So the maximum benefit we are going to get in the flexibility only. So our code can move between environments without changes to authentication logic. Yeah, so we just have to put default Azure credential once and then it's going to automatically manage everything. Now, what are we going to do in this particular demo? So in this particular demo, we are going to create a key vault on Azure platform and we will try to retrieve those credentials via default Azure credentials. So in our code we are going to use the default azure credentials and then we will try two particular authentication mechanism one is going to be azure cli and another is going to be service principle so if you want to get started with this code first of all actually we have to install certain packages so the first package is going to be pip install azure identity and the second package because we are going to deal with keywords azure keyword secrets is something that we have to install so let's go over the code for the demo so we are primarily going to use this code to retrieve the secrets from our key vault this is the same code which we have covered earlier so let me go over the code quickly 
first of all actually we are going to import certain packages because we are going to deal with the keyword so that's why we are going to import the secret client from our azure keyword secrets then and just to load the data from environment file we are going to invoke this method this method is going to come from this particular package and then the rest of the code is going to be same so only one change what we are going to do over here we are going to import default azure credentials from azure.identity package so the first thing what exactly are we doing so we are invoking this default azure credentials and you can see like i'm not passing any kind of variables or anything over here it's just that default azure credential we have to invoke this we are going to store it in the credential after that we have to get the world url and this is something which is going to come from environment file so here actually we have to define the azure world url and after that once we get this azure world url we are trying to get the value of this particular secret so after that we are going to connect with our key vault and for that actually we are going to use something called secret client here actually we just have to pass the vault url that we are going to get it from the environment variable and then we have to pass a credential we are just trying to retrieve the secret value from the keyword so key is going to be example key and we are going to just use the secret client dot get secret method to, to get a value of this example key if there is any issue with the default azure credential if you are not able to authenticate anyhow then we are going to use this credential unavailable error and this is going to help us to know like if there is any problem so that's why we have put it in the try and accept block and which it let us know okay if there is any problem in the authentication okay so first thing what we are going to do to execute this code is we have to create a key vault and we have to define our secret key as example key so i am going to go to my azure portal and after that first thing what we have to do is create a resource group so this i am going to create it very quickly i will just hit on the create button and then yeah it's done once my resource group is created i will go back to my home screen and have to create this key vault and i will just click on this create button for key vault it will open this particular window i can just select my resource group which i have created and then i have to provide a key vault name so this is going to be my key vault name and this particular name is available so i will just quickly go ahead and click on review and create and wait for the deployment to be completed and you can see deployment is completed successfully so i will now go to this key vault and then i will try to create a secret so here you can see like i am just going to click on this secret and then as of now i'm going to get this error so i need to have permission to create the secret over here so first of all i'm going to go to this im and here i will just click on this add role assignment and i will just go for key vault administrator role select the member from user group and then select my name from here now you can see like uh, my name has been selected so i will just go ahead and click on review and assign i can go to role assignment and i can confirm whether i have been added as a key vault administrator or not so you can see like my name has been added as a key vault administrator so again if i go to secret then i shouldn't be getting that particular issue over there we can see we are using a secret name as example key so i will be using same over here and after that i can just give the secret value for this demo i am just going to give example key only i can just go ahead and click on create and this has been successfully created so the next thing what i need to do i need to get the key vault url so for that i am going to go to this property and here i can see uh, the vault uri i am just going to copy this uri we'll go to my code again we'll go to environment file and here i will just update the key vault uri and save this file let me go ahead and try to run this code now so as you can see like i'm getting forbidden over here this is pretty much expected but let me just enable this logging also just to see like what kind of authentication mechanism it has tried now let me try to run this code one thing what i wanted to highlight over here the default azure credential which we have been using over here it tried to look for the authentication mechanism so first it tries to look for environment credentials and you can see like environment credential authentication is unavailable then it tries to look for manage identity the share token credentials everywhere it's mentioning okay the authentication is unavailable then it tries to look for azure cli credential that is also unavailable azure powershell and then the azure developer cli so at least like we can confirm that when we use the default azure credentials it tries several authentication mechanisms first thing what we are going to try we will try to log in using 
using Azure CLI. If it is not on your system, then you can just search for Azure CLI download and you can click on the first link what you are getting over here and then you can just, you know, click on this based on your system 64 or 32 bit. You can directly install it on your system. Once this is installed on your system, you can just go to your command prompt and from your command prompt, you can just fire this command is it login and then it will give you a pop up like that. You need to select your Microsoft account in which you have Azure subscription. I'm going to select this account and then it will try to retrieve the tenants and subscription for the selection. I have got some error over here and it's recommending to use this particular command to login. So let me try this command now and then I will just pass tenant ID from here. So let me just select that and we'll try to login. I will select this again and it's asking now it's asking for me to login. So let me just login very quickly. Then the authentication is looking for the authentication. Now you can see like after providing all the information, I was successfully able to retrieve my subscription, my ID and my tenant over here. And now it's asking like select a subscription and tenant and here is a number. So I am going to select one. I will hit enter and now I am in. So let me try to go back to my code and we'll try to run it again. And you can see like this time I was able to retrieve a key. We can also verify like whether it has used the Azure CLI or any other authentication mechanism. So for that, actually, we can just import the logging, just call this logging.basicconfig and then we have to just level equal to logging.debug. So let me just save this and try to run this again. And you can see at the end, we are getting that output. Here you can see like it again tries to go into that particular hierarchy. So first it tries to look for the environment credential. It was not able to find anything. Then it tries for manage identity. It was not able to find anything. Similarly, it looked for shared token credential. It was not able to find anything. And then you can see like it tries for Azure CLI credential. And here you can see like it got the succeeded message. And after that, it was able to retrieve the credential for the login and it didn't try the rest of the method. So because it was able to retrieve the credential via Azure CLI, that's why we are able to get this particular output. Now let me try other authentication mechanism. So we'll just we'll just log out from here. So I will just use log out. So in our earlier key vault code, which we have covered in our series, we were doing something like this. So we were having our environment file and in our environment file, we were just declaring the Azure client ID, tenant ID and the secret. And after that, we were retrieving all these values from the environment file. And then we were using something called client secret credentials. And then we were passing it to our secret client. In our next demo, we will try to create a service principle and we will try to log in using that, but without using this client secret credentials. So we just have to define our credentials over here. So I am just going to take this part and put it in this environment file. And now I will go back to my home screen and then I will just click on this Microsoft enter ID here first of all actually we have to register our app so I will just click on the app registration and I will just give some name sample demo app registration and you can see it has given me the client ID so I will just take this client ID I will just go over here and just update it the second thing what we have to mention is our tenant ID so I will just take this tenant ID again we'll go back to my visual studio and then we'll update this tenant ID and at the last we do have the secret so secret is something which we have to create over here so here I am just going to click on new client secret and just click on add and you can see like I have got a value so I will just take the value from here and will update over here and this would be our service principle so only one thing is remaining. We have to provide access to our key vault. I will again go to my key vault and here again, I will go to IM. So in IM, I will again click on this add role assignment. This time I am again going to use the key vault administrator. And this time I am going to select a member, but rather than assigning it to myself, I am going to assign it to uh, the service principle which we have created. So the name is going to come like this. So we do have this sample demo app registration. So I will just take this and it has been created so now instead of using the client secret credential so we are going to use the default azure credentials and what we are hoping because our service principle credentials has been defined in the environment file so we should be able to log in using this particular mechanism uh, let me try to run this code now 
and you can see like we have got a value like this and we are also getting all this option because we have enabled the logging so this time we should be able to log in via the first method only which is going to be environment credentials it has detected it like the environment is configured for client secret credentials so rather than we putting over here with the client secret credentials it automatically identified and ultimate like it just logged in and at the end actually we were able to get the output like the secret values example key so that's how default azure credential can help us that's all for this video thank you for watching